Preparing for the KTAB 40th anniversary celebration, we dug through the KTAB archives and found a story dating back 26 years to the summer of 1993. It features a downtown Abilene poised to make a change, and while the situation is less dire than it was then, Abilene is once again looking at changes downtown. Our KTAB Nathan Greaves steps back in time to see where they were headed then and where we're headed now. Picture that late 80s, early 90s downtown. What what would I be looking at right now? Well, you would be looking at a boarded up Grace Museum and you would be looking at a right of way that was, you know, really depressing. It was just truly just gravel and maybe a few scraggly bushes here and there. To be fair, downtown Abilene does still have some boarded up storefronts, but now it's to signify new construction and new life. But turn the clock back to the early 90s and it was a very different situation. Really, there was just no life and it was just very dead. But then in the summer of 1993, Downtown Abilene is in the process of being resurrected after years of lying near death when retailers moved away. Today, News Tab's Janice Cochran reports on further efforts to make the Central District the jewel in Abilene's crop. The proposed plan calls for the further development of Everman Park by the old T&P Depot, as well as the extension of North First Street all the way to the old traffic circle and the development of the area you see behind me as a park. Well, there's certainly a lot more traffic today than there was when Janice was shooting down here in 1993, and all that traffic means that there's a lot more life, a lot more to do in downtown Abilene. And if we look down the road just a little bit at Everman Park, there's a whole lot more going on there too. Certainly much more than that open field that was there before. But how did we get here? Enter Mayor Gary McCaleb, who was there for all the change. It was an incremental thing, and it was, uh, I think, in t to some extent, there were plans, but the plans were flexible enough that it became an organic process as well that uh, gave citizens opportunities, businesses to move in. An unplanned organic change, arts, the paramount, the grace, and the start of Abilene's storybook story, all leading to a reason to go downtown. Downtown has to be both uh, a magnet and glue. In other words, the magnet that draws people into downtown and that even serves as a sort of destination tourism spot. The glue, what keeps people here? People like Chamber of Commerce President Doug Peters, staying here and staying busy, working toward the future. And I think that we build uh, on the great work that's been done by community pioneers like Gary McCaleb and uh, Lynn Barnett of uh, the Chamber's Abilene Cultural Affairs Council. A new downtown task force calls for more parking downtown, more changes that haven't been announced, but even if they do finish them all. 20 years from now, we'll be going through the exact same exercise uh, because downtown revitalization is a lot like housework. You never finish doing it. Uh, it's constant. Uh, you think you're done, you're really just starting over again. So it's a cycle that we need to continue to pay attention to because it's a very important first impression for those who come here to decide if they want to go to school at one of our area universities, uh, if they want to invest their company's future here, or if they want to raise their family here. And so here we are today. Sure, some of those old plans didn't pan out. Cypress Street is still a one-way. The MLK Bridge isn't the front door to downtown. But many other plans did come to fruition. Trees, more life, open businesses. And so the cycle continues. In downtown Abilene, with coverage you can count on, Nathan Grieve, KTAB News. Fascinating look back. Thank you, Nathan. The growth in Abilene continues with more than one project in the works and more likely in the years to come.